Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Um, another video I wanted to do on this service change here. Um, first of all, uh, when you're looking at trying to figure out your cabinet, uh, go to Article 110.26. It talks about your width, um, 30 inches with nothing in front of it. Like this shelf, of course, the panel may not fit, so we may have to cut the shelf and put the bracket over here and get rid of this. We had a piece of wood at the bottom that had to come off. Uh, it also talks about the clearance of heights. Typically not to have things six foot above it. Uh, maybe that would be like a water line coming across or a shelf. They want to have an open clearance all the way around the panel, especially down below as well, so you can service in front of it. A lot of that's common sense. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about was identifications in Article 200. And it talks about using identifications of white and gray conductors. So for instance, on baseboard heat, see how this is white? Well, we have to re-identify this, not through the whole circuit, but at least, in my opinion, somewhere around, you know, five, six inches, so you know that that is going to be re-identified. Um, so before I took all this apart, I put tape around these, just a small piece, because I knew I had to cut and trim it. Uh, so when I fed it back down the Romex connectors, I also didn't lose it, because if you hook this up to a neutral, you're going to blow that thermostat real quick. So you want to make sure you identify this, and it talks about it... Uh, anything over 50 volts in 200.7C. We also talk about um, another thing called multi-branch circuits in 210.4. This is going to be talking about disconnecting whether you have two hots or you have a line to neutral. Well, this is going to be two hots right here. So you have to have the main bar right here to disconnect both of them. And then a multi-branch circuit, well, it would be something like this. A black, red, and a white. A dishwasher a garbage disposal, and a neutral. Those have to be disconnected with the two-pole 15 because that's a 14. So again, your number 12 gauge here is going to be 20 amp, your 14 gauge is going to be 15 amp, your 10 gauge is going to be 30 amp, and your 6 gauge is going to be 50 amp. Well, this is an aluminum 6 gauge, so it really should be a 40 amp, but a 50 was in here already. Um, and that we'll talk about in 240.6 underneath your sizing of your breaker sizes. Um, the other thing that we wanted to show you real quickly, well, this is a really hard one to find. This was under bushings in the back, um, and I couldn't really find this in Chapter 300 and wiring requirements about what size do you go to a plastic bushing after a certain size conductor, whether it's aluminum or copper. Well, we found it in 352.46 under PVC for bushings. It was a number four and larger, and I know that just by experience, but I can't seem to find that. So if any of you guys want to elude me and email me back or put a post underneath there where this is at, um, the closest I could find was going to be 300.5H, and that is talking about uh, protecting of your raceway. So in, for instance, an insulated bushing coming into the conductor, but it doesn't say, again, number four or larger. I haven't found it yet. Maybe I'm missing it. But I did find it under 352.46 PVC, and this again is in 2014 handbook. So again, any, any raceways coming in, for instance, this does not need a plastic bushing because these are a number 6. So he didn't get me on that. These right here are 12 and 14, so it does not matter, and they pinch anyways. But whether I've got a SER cable coming in with a two-screw metallic screw-down connector such as this but larger, that then would need a plastic bushing, for instance, on feeding a number 200 amps to a basement. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks.